Hello friends, I welcome you all to this NPTEL course on novel technologies for food processing and self life extension. In this lecture, we will discuss briefly about the principles of food preservation and processing. Food preservation techniques have a long history of its use. They were probably first practiced substantially soon after our ancestors developed from hunter gatherer society to initiate primitive farming for the first time producing food surpluses and then necessitating extended storage to in order to avoid wastage. The earliest used technologies certainly included for example, drying, curing, fermentation and of course, cooking and later on even simple use of chemical preservatives such as sulphur dioxide generated by burning sulphur to decontaminate fruits prior to their fermentation. And most of these processes, although more sophisticated and much better controlled now, but they are still being operated based on those empirically derived old procedures. So, there is a need to find out or research out the required application oriented effects that to understand the preservation of the food from spoilage as well as from the risk of the food poisoning. And if we understand what are the different factors which govern the spoilage of the food, which govern the providing risk to the food safety or its food consumption, then our job as a food processor or as a food preservers become easier or it gets simplified. For any food preservation process, the aim is to extend the time for which the food can be kept before spoiling. The preservation therefore, may be defined as the treatment of food steps to prolong the time for which they can be kept before spoiling. While most of the food preservation techniques are primarily based upon the prevention of growth of food spoilage and food poisoning microorganisms the preservation of other attributes of the food, the quality attributes of the food, the sensory characteristics of the food becomes of additional concern. All foods you will agree with me following harvest may lose quality at some rate or the other in a manner which are very dependent on the type of the food, its composition formulation, storage and so on. And this quality loss may be accelerated or may be minimized at any stage and the total preservation of a food is therefore, is highly multi component that it seldom relies only on one factor because you see there are different factors which influence the growth and multiplication of microorganisms. In the earlier classes, we have seen how different characteristics, how different reactions of the food change its characteristics result into the generation of new compounds etcetera which influence the sensory characteristics of the food. So, we have to understand all these things and once a proper understanding of this is established. The our job as a food processor or our job 
as a food preservers become simple. So, these quality loss reactions therefore, they become a principal target of food preservation technologies. One is the microbial quality loss reaction and then the general quality loss reactions. Whatever techniques is applied, it should not result in the quality reductions. So, in this slide I have tried to give you an overview or are different types of quality loss reactions that major quality loss reactions. They may be microbiological in nature, they may be enzymatic, chemical or physical. The microbiological quality loss reactions may be because of the growth or presence of toxicogenic toxin producing microorganisms or bacteria in food or it may involve just growth or presence of infective microorganisms or simply growth of spoilage microorganism. In the next slide I will give you little detail that is what are this infective microorganism, what are spoilage microorganism, what are toxin producing microorganisms etc. The enzymatic processes which influence the quality of the food may be hydrolytic reactions catalyzed by enzymes like lipases, proteases etc. It may be lipoxygenase initiated reactions or enzymatic browning. You have seen earlier classes how the phenologies enzyme etc. they result into the browning of the fruits, vegetables, surfaces etc. Chemical reactions like oxidative rancidity, oxidative and reductive discoloration, non-enzymatic browning or even nutrient losses due to leaching or other losses may influence the quality of the food. Mass transfer, movement of low molecular weight components, loss of crispiness, loss of flavor, fridge induced damages etcetera may be included in the physical factors or physical reasons for the quality reduction in food materials. And if the quality loss due to one or the other region takes place into the food, the consequences may range broadly. There may be just simple loss of the marketability of the food like for example, a food due to one or the other change in its characteristics has less self life or its color, flavor, texture etcetera are not appealing then just economic loss or marketing ability of the food may be lost. But on the other hand, if this spoilage of the food or quality loss is the microbiological quality loss, if there is a microorganism of concern toxic microorganism or pathogenic microorganism or our preservation technology which was based on inactivation of these microorganisms, if that fails there may be it may cause health hazard to the consumers. Similarly, other cases that is where the microbial spoilage only takes place only the microorganisms are growing and they are producing certain changes into the food characteristics composition. But so, it may just result into the loss of some food, but it may not be life threatening. So, it becomes very important that is we have to see what is the causative agent in the food, what are the type and nature of the change it is likely to bring in the food materials okay. and that decides makes important accordingly we decide processing technologies and proceed for food preservation. So, before we come to that let us briefly see that uh, the what is food spoilage. A spoilage is the process in which food deteriorates to the point at which it is not edible to human. It becomes inferior in its quality may be its sensory characteristics, its other characteristics are changed that 
we may not like to consume it its edibility becomes reduced there are different factors responsible for the spoilage of the food which we will take a little later a spoilage of food may be due to the growth and multiplication of bacteria okay and this is one of the major concern to the food processors and even the consumers there are different types of microorganism as i indicated in the earlier slide that some microorganisms while growing in food consume the nutrients because incidentally the microorganisms also require similar types of uh, chemicals or nutrients for their survival so in fact there is a competition between us and the microorganism we both fight each other to for the food and it is the survival of the fittest so microorganisms for their survival they consume food nutrients they grow on food they multiply on food and in the process they produce like some microorganism produce simply certain secondary metabolites etc which may result the change in sensory characteristics which may result the change in textural and other characteristics but the food in fact is not toxic it is not a safety risk so here these are called that is spoilage of that is such microorganisms are called food spoilage microorganisms on the other hand there are certain microorganism in the next slide we will take up a few examples which when grow into the food they produce a certain toxin that is they release the met metabolites released by these bacteria or microorganism on the food might be toxic and therefore they are poisonous and the food such foods if we consume we fall ill so these type of microorganisms are called food intoxicating microorganisms certain bacteria are of this nature third type that is the infectious bacteria that is the microorganism here they do not grow or multiply on the food or water but rather they simply use food or water as its carrier source and with the help of food and water when we that they contaminate the food and when we consume such type of contaminated foods these microorganism enter into our system and in our small intestine or large intestine wherever they find suitable environment they grow multiply and then produce toxin so these are called infection type infectious microorganism food infections i have already explained but the examples like salmonella shigella etc are some common bacteria which may cause food poisoning that is they release the toxin after the food is consumed they so here one point becomes important that these infectious bacteria even if they are present in the food that may not be a problem but only thing when we consume this food it becomes that is they release they grow on the food they do not grow on the fruit rather they grow in our system and release the toxin in our system so obviously it takes some time for the effects to be seen after the contaminated food is eaten the infection may be from the diseased animal poultry egg milk and from the food contaminated by the rodents insects etc even sometime environmental pollutions etc they also may contaminate the food trichomonas is a common disease caused by certain nematodes that is trichinella spiralis which lodges in the muscle fiber of the hogs or a pork muscles is a normal habitat of this type of bacteria so it is not it doesn't create any problem as far as the pork muscle is concerned 
But if we consume this pork muscle, this bacteria along the, with the muscle goes in our system and it grows and multiplies in our system and then actually create problem. The other type of food poisoning is the food intoxication that is here some bacteria produce toxin in food and they grow that is this type of food intoxicating bacteria they grow into the food. So, that becomes important factor that is they grow in the food they produce the toxin and the toxin may be of two types again here that is endotoxin or enterotoxin that the bacteria grows in the food releases the toxin and the toxin may remain inside the bacterial cell or the toxin may be secreted by the bacteria into the food. So, the food may become toxin or the food may be as such, but it may contain the toxic bacteria. Common example is the botulism. It is a type of food poisoning which is caused by injection of toxin that is produced by the Clostridium botulinum. The Clostridium botulinum is an anaerobic toxin producing bacteria which is a common problem in the it is a spore farmer common problem in the low acid foods ok. And it produces such a potent toxin that a spoonful of this toxin is capable of killing a million of persons. So, this is the example of uh, food toxin producing bacteria. So, obviously, the food materials which are likely to be contaminated by this clostridium botulinum etcetera, we have no other option, but to make sure that this contamination is totally uh, eliminated from the food. Food is made clostridium botulinum free. Another types of toxins are the mycotoxins like aflatoxins, ocaratoxins, portolin etcetera, which are the secondary metabolites produced by certain varieties of molds like aspergillus, nigers etcetera and they grow into the food and release this toxin and these toxins again become problematic to us in the long run. The food poisoning may be again of different types that is the poisoning may occur when we take many times what happens we see different many cases of outbreak of the food poisoning that is these poisons may be naturally present in the food or these poisons that is they are the basically toxic chemicals which might be naturally present into the food or they might be released by the microorganisms as we have seen in the earlier slides that is the microorganism produce this, but the concentration of these toxic chemicals sometimes is very very low as you have seen in the case of botulinum toxins. And normally this poison food or toxic food resembles in its uh, sensory and other characteristics to the common food, but we by seeing just by seeing we may not be able to see that whether it is a toxic food or poison food we consume this and get the effect if it is poisonous there. A few examples of the natural food poisoning agents are the arsenic, lead, oxalic acid, cadmium, mercury etcetera which might be present into the food materials either due to the their contact or contamination with the heavy water etcetera or from the environment or from the other sources the food may get contaminated the water etcetera they may have or even the certain varieties wild varieties of certain mushrooms or even certain mussels wild animal meats they might contain certain poisonous substances and if we, if we consume them we may fall ill. Ergotism is a type of poisoning which is uh, arising from the growth of the fungus on wheat or rye. In this slide a brief overview is given that is the type of the poisoning, how it happens, how it takes place, whether what is the cause, consumption of the microorganism or consumption of the toxin etcetera, 
what are in general symptoms of this type of toxin and the onset what is the time it normally takes for the symptoms to appear like staphylococcal food poisoning here the organism as well as the toxin both that is if the organism it may be produced that is there are certain strains they can make the food toxin as well as the organism and also grow in our system. The normally symptoms of staphylococcal food poisoning include vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, abdomen clumps etcetera and the it takes around 1 to 6 hours or less time for the onset of the symptoms. Streptococcus poisoning, salmonella type of food poisoning or botulinum type of food poisoning. Here that is the organism that is in the salmonella and streptococcus only the microorganism is involved that is if we consume this microorganism they get established in our system and they produce toxin whereas in the case of botulinum it is the toxin it produces releases toxin into the food and we get consumes and this the omitting nausea, diarrhea difficulty in swallowing, double vision etcetera are the some of the symptoms of these types of toxicities. Okay. Various conditions may result to the contamination of the food and therefore, it is spoilage of the food even how the food is handled even environmental the pollution or contamination may come from the environment, may come from the handle equip, equipment, may come from the processing machines etcetera alright. Even improper washing, improper preparation, improper refrigeration etcetera may result into the, the use of contaminated water may cause even the lack of screening and exposure of food to flies, insects, pests etcetera this not only lead to diseases, but also reduce the aesthetic values of the food. So, one should take proper care to eliminate these sources of contamination from the food materials. Okay. So, that is you have seen that is in some case we only the microorganisms that is they are present into the food. So, the growth the microorganism grow and multiply. So, this becomes an important consideration that is how the microorganism grow in the food. So, let us uh, devote spend some time to understand the microbial growth and its kinetics. The growth normally as you can see here in this slide it is it might be increase in the cell number or increase in the size of the organism depending upon whether it is a multicellular organism or unicellular organism. In the unicellular organism normally we measure the growth by increase in the number of the organism. In multicellular we go for the increase in the size of the organism. So, growth can be defined as that is increase of the all chemical components of the cell with the same speed and after a certain time this leads to increase in cell number which causes increase in the size or number of the cell of the individual. And most of the bacteria have asexual reproduction, asexual growth which means that no sex cells are involved in these cases. So, the bacteria they reproduce by binary fission, they divide binarily usually perpendicularly to the length axis and thereby two new cells are produced from each bacterial cell. That is how the bacteria grows. There are different models that is the growth of a bacterial cell very well expressed in the form of mathematical equations if the definition which we have seen in the last slide fits well that is the all chemical components of the cell increase with the same speed. So, a unicellular bacterium 
increases in the cell number exponentially with the base of 2 and this n t is equal to n 0 2 to the power n can be used to define the bacterial growth where n t is the cell number at any time t n 0 is the initial number of the microorganism and small n is the number of doubling which is called generations. So, if we use notation g for the generation time or meal doubling time and the t we take the time then equation 1 can be written as n t is equal to n 0 multiplied by 2 to the power t by g mu which is the specific growth rate it is generally expressed as 1 by g. So, if use this notation in the equation 2 then we can write it as n t is equal to n 0 into 2 to the power t mu and on taking logarithm of equation 3 we find log n t is equal to log n 0 plus t mu log 2. This describes a microbial growth analytics that is if this equation 3 is plotted that is log number of microorganism are plotted against a time that is you get a straight line. Okay. It shows that the bacteria during exponential growth we obtain a straight line. Another phenomena is very important that is period of balanced and unbalanced growth follows in the microbial culture that is growth of a bacteria is related to the composition of the medium. If all the essential components are available the growth is balanced throughout that is here balanced growth means all the components are increasing in same proportion cell number, cell size, cell component etcetera. If however, one or several essential components are missing the growth is terminated due to unbalanced growth which often leads to the death of the culture. If two different energy sources are available in the growth medium the growth curve normally shows two exponentially distinct phases. Here you can see that uh, the to express the growth curve of a bacteria there are four phases lag phase, log phase, stationary phase and death phase. In fact, after being inoculated into the system bacterial cell takes some time for adjustment and the growth is very minimal or even no in this case and that is called lag phase you have seen that the almost a straight line and which is followed by then exponential phase that is the bacteria which we have seen in the last slide that equation it grows exponentially then finally either due to depletion of the one or other constituent or because of the of the secondary toxic metabolites that is this there is a some period of unbalanced growth here and then it is followed by a stationary phase that is the bacteria goes under dormant condition there is no growth, but still bacteria is live and then finally, that is bacteria once remaining for long in the stationary phase that it may there may be accumulation of the toxic metabolites or there may be depletion of the food reserves and ultimately bacteria dries uh, this uh, dies and the death phase is also similarly that is exponential like la growth phase here it is exponential similarly death phase is also and these two phases becomes very important that is in the other slides we will see that is food processing technologies and food preservation technologies there are many 
incidents or processes where we want that bacteria should grow in proper conditions. There are many processes where we want that bacteria should die and also there are certain processes where the bacteria is not dried rather we keep the bacteria or other microorganism into the dormant situation. Understanding of their growth kinetics, death kinetics and how they remain in the dormant state like sporulation etcetera becomes, becomes very important in deciding the food process operations even processing technologies etcetera which we will be studying now in this course uh, next time and onwards. So, we have seen the microbial growth. Let us now understand what are the various factors which influence the growth of bacteria or microorganism in food. Because if we are able to understand properly the factors governing the growth, our job as a food processor becomes simple. That is, in either case, whether you want to encourage the growth or whether you want to uh, cause the death of the microorganism, you have to operate through those processes or those parameters which favor their growth and death. Okay. So, these factors, therefore, which influence the growth and multiplication of microorganism in food, again they can be grouped into different classes like physical factors, chemical factors and microbiological factors. And there are certain factors like microbiological factors which relate to the nature of the microorganism as such. In the physical factors, temperature, water activity and oxidation reduction potential becomes important factors. Okay, because of the time constraint, I will not go into these details how, but in general increasing the temperature results into the that is the growth that is there every microorganism needs some optimum temperature for growth. If you reduce it to lower temperature, the growth ceases. If you go to the higher temperature, the microorganism dies. So, similarly water activity, oxidation and reduction potential etcetera are important variable. Among the chemicals that is the substrate available into the food material for the growth of the microorganism, concentration of hydrogen ion like pH of the food, concentration of the major solutes present into the food or even presence or absence of various other uh, materials in the food or even presence and absence of oxygen, air or preservatives this also influences the microbial growth kinetics or growth rates. Even the microbial characteristics like how microorganisms are able to utilize the substrate like not on my microorganism they cannot utilize starch, but if starch is hydrated and it is converted into glucose then microorganism find it easy to consume. So, the substrate the rate at which are type of the substrate which microorganisms are able to utilize in the products form, even the number and type of the microorganism present and the growth rate that is one microorganism might be able to consume a particular nutrient at a uh, larger rate or more rate and the other microorganism can consume it the lower rate. So, these are some of the factors which might influence the characteristics of the growth into food material or anywhere. These factors might be classified into different ways that is the intrinsic factors these include those chemical and physical factors that are within the food and with which inextricably in contact throughout the period. The other factors might be the processing factors that is the factors that are deliberately applied to the food during processing for improved preservation. Some of the factors can be categorized as extrinsic factors that is these include those factors that influence microorganism in food, but they are applied from outside 
generally they act during storage. The other two important factors becomes implicit factors and net effect. The implicit factors include those factors that are related to the nature of the microorganism themselves and to the interactions which microorganisms they have among themselves and the interactions which these microorganisms they have with the environment or with the other uh, food materials etcetera with whom they come into contact during storage etcetera storage process. And ultimately the net effects becomes very important when we analyze any processing situation etcetera that is different factors it might so happen that is these factors many individual factors individually they have one effect. But when in a food process like in hurdle technology another concept when multiple factors are involved then overall effect of these multiple factors might be much more than what would have been expected by the individual factors alone. So, the net effects takes into account the fact that many of the factors strongly influence the effect of each other on microbial growth and survival. So, the overall effect of combination of factors may not be although rapidly predictable, but may be usefully greater than the perceived effect of the single factor. So, these different factors which earlier I already listed. So, let us see they that is a, they can be classified here in this slide I have shown the classification of those factors that is in the intrinsic factors, extrinsic factors and implicit factors and ultimately which influence the microbial ecology in the food. And once these are understood as I already indicated our job becomes easy. So, intrinsic factors like they can be further three types chemical factor, physical factor, processing factor, the chemical factors may be nutrient, pH and buffering capacity, oxidation reduction potential or uh, antimicrobial substances, physical factor may be equilibrium relative humidity or water activity ice and freeze concentration or certain colloidal changes that is when the food comes across to different conditions there might be certain colloidal changes taking place and this because of this change the microorganism may find it is easy to consume that substrate that it may find it difficult to depending upon the type of the change. The processing conditions like it may change the food composition therefore, it may make the constituent or substrate easily available to the microorganism or available with difficulty. There may be changes in the microbial type, changes in the microbial number and even changes in the microstructure of the food etcetera making the food easy or difficult to be utilized by the. Then these are you can say as I told you earlier that these are the intrinsic factors present into the food, but they are uh, and with these factors the microorganism is always in contact. The extrinsic factors they are the one like equilibrium relative humidity during storage, temperature of the storage environment, oxygen tension of the storage environment etcetera. So, they are the factors which operate from outside and with this again the contaminating microorganism. Implicit factors microbial growth rates, their synergistic effect or antagonistic effects that is there are certain the food it might not be initially useful for a, or a particular bacteria might not find it good for its growth, but there might be one group of bacteria which grows into that particular food and brings about certain change and then other group of bacteria find it useful and milk becomes a very good example like there are certain bacteria once it grows lactic acid group of bacteria produces certain acidity into the milk and then little acid tolerant lactic acid bacteria grow into it. So, there might be synergistic effect or antagonistic effect antagonistic effect that is the certain microorganism once they grow change 
bring out changes in the maybe acidity, maybe in other alcohol content they might release etcetera which becomes detrimental to other microorganisms. So, these factors ok. So, once having understood these uh, different factors which influence the ecology of microorganism their growth and development or inactivation kinetics it becomes the easy to decide that what type of food process we should go for depending upon the type of microorganism and so that is most of the antimicrobial food preservation techniques that is in the initial itself I indicated that majority of the food processes they work on either inactivating or killing of the microorganisms. So, the major target for the antimicrobial food preservation technologies are shown in this slide that there may be two types. One is the, as you have seen there is a food poisoning microorganism, other is the food spoilage microorganism. Food poisoning microorganisms that is it may be toxic type or it may be infective type. So, if it is infective type like Salmonella, Listeria, Compylobacter etcetera. So, its presence or multiplication is that is we should see that we should manipulate the factors which we have seen in the earlier slide during processing and handling and storage in such a way that is these infective type of microorganism it is eliminated from the food that is its presence itself is not desirable and of course, its multiplication its uh, multiplies in our system. Similarly, the multiplication of toxicogenic bacteria that is the toxicogenic bacteria there are certain bacteria like Clostridium botulinum and Staphylococcus aureus their presence might not be a problem. If they have contaminated the food, but the condition around the food is manipulated in such a way that they are not able to grow and multiply that because this will be a problematic only when they grow into the food and produce toxin. So, these two types becomes in fact target for the antimicrobial food preservation technologies where the toxicogenic or toxin producing or poisoning type of microorganism are involved. So, other that is the food spoilage microorganisms as you have seen that is these microorganisms their growth that is presence as well as if they grow into the food they when they grow they cause minor metabolic products like thiol, esters, amine, peroxide which ultimately influence color and flavor of the material. Okay, they may result into the generation of major metabolic products, secretion of enzymes, even presence of biomass etcetera itself which results into the visible presence of microorganisms such as slime, haze, mold colonies and so things. So, this now means that is the spoilage group of microorganisms they grow and produce certain secondary metabolites and which cause the sensory and other characteristics changed which becomes unfit for consumption. So, in this case not only the presence, but its growth becomes an important factor. So, with this we try to decide that what are depending upon these factors what are the technologies that should be used for processing and in the next class we will start from here that is what are the depending upon the type of the food material depending upon the microorganisms or their contamination labels etcetera what type of technologies we should use for the preservation and processing of food. Thank you.